Hello everyone, welcome to my Batman Arkham Origins. I am the Knight Difficulty, no damage walkthrough. This is going to be Pioneer's Bridge and Firefly's boss fight. And Firefly's boss f oh my god. I swear to god guys, because of the fact that Firefly has an L in the name, I end up mixing up my L's for no reason. Like, sometimes I just have trouble saying Fire or Firefly, it's... Oh my god, <laughs> I mix up my L's too many times when I was trying to rehearse certain lines to say for this video. <laughs> and uh, you just heard that mishap right there. But, as I was saying guys, Firefly is a bad fight. I used to think he was cool. But, I don't know how, but in my earlier playthroughs of Bop and Arkham Origins, I never encountered the kind of issues I was encountering right now with Firefly's boss fight. And the bloopers for Firefly alone must take up like half of the video, I would say. It's ridiculous. Like, the amount of times Firefly would cancel out my glue grenade for no reason, the amount of times he would get phantom range on his attacks, the amount of times he would hit me during cammed animations where you're supposed to zoom in on Firefly when you hit him with the glue grenade, and during that whole entire animation where you cannot move, you can take damage, the amount of times Batman wasn't moving whatsoever when I was trying to move through specific areas. It was unbelievable guys i never thought firefly could be this broken but he's honestly one of the most broken bosses ever in the entire arkham series and with these broken designs comes a very rigid play style because if you do not adhere to the strategy that i'm going to use against firefly you're gonna have a hard time with him because he's pretty broken but right now we have a predator encounter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sound takedown on this guy and then the previous enemies I'm going to use my multi batarang on them in order to floor them and I'm going to finish them off with ground takedowns. So you got to be fast here because the enemies are patrolling and you see that guy to the bottom right. You got to be very quick here because he will come up the stairs very quickly or he will climb the ladder. So what I'm going to do is knock these guys out. I'm going to get back on the vantage point that I was at. And when the enemies group together, I'm going to use the smoke pellets in order to blind them. But do not just rush in immediately because some of the enemies have thermal goggles. And when the enemies have thermal goggles, they will be able to see you through the smoke and they will shoot you. I had that happen in one of my mishaps in this section. And there's nothing bloopers worthy for this particular predator encounter. But it could have gone a lot smoother. But I take this guy out, I'm going to take this guy out, and when you take down seven enemies, the last enemy will surrender, and you'll be able to find out where the bombs are, and from here on out, it's going to be bomb defusal. So there are three bombs that we need to defuse, and Gordon is going to disable the final bomb during Firefly's boss fight, and he's not even going to adhere to Batman's advice, and he's just going to be very stubborn and just commit to his strategy for taking down Firefly, and I even work with Batman. I never really understood this about Gordon. I mean, I don't know why at this point in the game he's still insistent upon not really following Batman's direction or really trying to work with him. And I just feel like he complicated the situation even further by not listening to what Batman had to say. And I mean, Batman has been delivering how many of the assassins? I mean, I know it was an anonymous tip that was delivered to Gordon whenever uh, Batman took down an assassin, but still, he had to assume it was Batman delivering the assassins. And especially after the Gotham Royal Hotel scene where Batman delivers the Joker. Like, why is it that Gordon doesn't try to trust Batman a little bit more, especially during this dire situation after the Gotham City Royal Hotel? I feel like they did it just to ramp up the tension, but I just feel like they could have presented it in a better sort of way. And we get to punch Brandon in the face right here. We get to punch this asshole, right? And we're going to school this uh, police officer over here. And this is one of the things I really love whenever the police refer to Batman as Sir. <laughs> like, he's not even working in the police force, but... Like, he's feared by the police, and then later on in Batman Arkham City, he's respected by the police enough to be called Sir. I find that to be really, really funny whenever I hear a police officer called Batman Sir. Because not only is it a way of respecting uh, Batman's notoriety among the criminal populace and also with the police force, but to think that the police would just call him Sir when he's not even a part of the police force, I just find it to be very funny. But it is also a wholesome moment, like, it's more wholesome in Batman Arkham City when you rescue that one officer from, uh, the, the cryo gun that Penguin steals from, uh, Freeze, and he just calls him Sir. I acknowledge this in my Batman Arkham City video where I'm at the museum, but I really think that is a wholesome moment, and you're not gonna appreciate it as much if you don't understand the mythos of Batman and just his notoriety in general. 
but this is a minor predator encounter. It's just four guys. Just do a double ledge takedown, and then just take out the guys however you want to do so. I get a little sloppy here, because I'm trying to be very cautious against these enemies, but at the same time, I'm kind of making the gameplay look sloppy with my uh, poor choices. And also, uh, I tried to use a propane tank on one of the enemies, but it missed somehow. I, I don't know why there are those situations where uh, the propane tanks can miss. I'm guessing what happened was the enemy went right around the corner, and therefore the remote clock could not connect to the enemy, but it clearly did, because it caused the propane tank to be pulled towards him, but I'm guessing he must have flinched in a very strange way. That's just something you gotta bear in mind, guys. Uh, whenever you use the remote claw and the second half of the remote claw connects with the thug, there is no telling how he will flinch, and there's no telling which direction he will flinch when he gets hit by the second half of the remote claw. And that's why oftentimes it's better to reserve the second half of the remote claw for the propane tank. So you just, you first target the thug and then you target the propane tank so that Oh, I mean, I'm not saying it wrong right there. You have to get the first half of the remote claw to connect with the propane tank so that uh, it, you're not getting into any situations where the enemy flinches in a very weird way. But anyway, we're moving on, and we have some uh, minor platforming right over here, and I can definitely appreciate the scale of these kind of encounters, these kind of platforming moments. Warner Brothers really tried to up a lot of the drama here. I mean, you're navigating a destroyed bridge as Firefly is slowly burning it into a crisp. And it makes for some very interesting platforming, and the music's very dramatic, and it's a pretty cool section. However, uh, you know, that animation Batman was doing when he was on that beam, and th this same animation right here, like this general animation that Batman does when he's trying to uh, navigate, like, narrow spaces, or just trying to make sure he doesn't lose his footing, it can get in the way sometimes, because whenever you're doing turns, like whenever you're on beams that just turn in a strange way, I demonstrated this in Mad Hatter's area, but there are just times where Batman doesn't navigate like curves correctly, he doesn't navigate at perpendicular angles very well, and it can lead to him getting stuck, and it can lead to him to sometimes falling off, but it, it doesn't happen right here where sometimes he just falls off, but it's annoying nonetheless. And then this combat encounter right here, I had a couple of weird moments here. So for some reason, one of the enemies, he was just standing completely still. Batman did the free flow evade over him, but for some reason he cancelled the free flow evade to do a normal evade. Like literally in the middle of the animation, Batman just cancelled into the normal evade. And he ended up rolling into the electric fence and I took damage. And that right there was very unfortunate. There's just a lot of moments in this video alone where I was getting screwed by the game in some really stupid ways, similar to the previous video. But you can actually disable the electric fence in the middle of combat. I don't know if you can reactivate it. If you can reactivate it, that's dumb. But luckily that wasn't the case, and I'm able to clear these guys out. I restarted this encounter like two times because of the weird issues I was encountering with this section. And we've done this bomb right over here, and these bombs have checkpoints. You've got to get the checkpoints done before the time runs out, otherwise you'll die. And navigating back, uh, we're back into the same room again, but we have uh, a bit more enemies this time. And I don't like the way this Predator Encounter starts out, where you don't really have a lot of options at your disposal. And sometimes, that guy on the ground, uh, he doesn't choose to move. I don't know why this happens. And also, there's a weird bug with this Predator Encounter. So, remember that hallway I was in before I entered this room? Well, when you're in that hallway, for some reason, if you try to use remote control Batarangs, the game just cancels out your remote control Batarangs. It will just not follow the Batarang, and it will just stay completely still, and your Batarang just, you can't control it anymore. I, and I have this in the blooper section. Yeah, again, just more bad issues I was encountering with this later half of the game. Yeah, I, I've never encountered anything like this with a game before. I've already acknowledged this, but Batman Arkham Origins has to be one of the buggiest games I've ever played. And... I've heard rumors of a remaster coming for this game because of the fact that Rocksteady is creating Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League and Batman Arkham Origins is the first game in the Arkham series to introduce the Suicide Squad in the post credit scene. That's why people are assuming that uh, the leaks are to be true, that there's a remastered version of this game coming out because it would help in building the hype for uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, and also to give people something to enjoy other than Gotham Knights, because everyone is hating Gotham Knights right now, and I don't blame them. It's a really bad game, just from the footage I've seen. But we've done all of that, and now we have this combat encounter. This is yet again another example of gameplay that fucks me, because you see the fire at the edge of the arena? Well, there are certain parts of this arena where there isn't any fire present, but if you go near it, 
you end up taking damage from nothing. You take fire damage from fire that's completely invisible. And also, if Batman happens to do the free flow evade or he just happens to do an animation very close to fire, you'll end up taking damage. And I even took damage during a takedown animation because Batman gained a, a bit of forward momentum in the middle of the takedown animation and he ended up stepping in fire. I'll never understand. Like, look at that right there. I touched fire, but it didn't damage me. You go to other parts of this arena where there isn't any fire, and I'm at that same range, and I would have taken fire damage. It's bullshit. And then this fight right here is really bad. I used to enjoy this fight, but not anymore, because of the fact that the four designs are putting pressure upon me to just adhere to this very rigid strategy. But initially, you can use glue grenades against Firefly, and whenever he gets hit by three sets of Batarangs, he'll always recover, and then he'll glide to the side. If you time your glue grenade correctly, you'll be able to hit him before he even has a chance to attack. But sometimes it doesn't work though, because Firefly, like I've said, is pretty bullshit. Because whoever designed the visual effects, and whoever designed the hitboxes for Firefly, should be fired. Like, the, the fire can actually destroy your glue grenade before it's even, like, gotten out of his flamethrower. And also, his flamethrower has some shit hitboxes to it, because it can hit you without even touching you. And, by the way, whenever he initiates his flamethrower just then, if you do not use the evade, he will always hit you. The game really wants you to use your evade. But there are just a lot of situations where you- Look, you see that just then? Look, my glue grenade got destroyed. Like, again, look at that! It got destroyed before the flames even came out of the flamethrower. It's bullshit. That is such fucking bullshit. And I was very lucky to have not been hit just then. Every other attempt where that has happened, I have been hit, but I was very lucky this time. And anytime you put Firefly into a daze, you can use the, the back claw, but I don't recommend it for the second phase. The second phase is even more bullshit than this. Like, for the second phase, just avoid using the glue grenade altogether and try to focus on just putting Firefly in a daze but not using the back claw as well because if you use the back claw on Firefly, he is very quick to attack and you can just go into these cinematic moments where the camera just zooms in on him and you can't move. And also right there, that beam is broken. I had two moments where I took fire damage from nothing and then I, Batman got stuck on that beam somehow and I don't know why, it's in the blooper section. But that right there, you've got to wait in that spot until Firefly clears the way, then you just gotta keep running. And coming up is my favorite quote from Firefly, when he says, Stop, drop, and rock and roll. Yeah, the actor really had a lot of fun when he was uh, doing the voice acting for Firefly. It's just a shame the developers couldn't make the gameplay on par with his voice acting. But right here, that right there, I know I said not to use the glue grenade, but I just wanted to take a chance right there. I don't know if I really recommend that. But in this phase, Firefly can throw grenades at you, and you never want to use grenades when Firefly throws them, because what happens is, whenever you throw a glue grenade at Firefly, the camera will zoom in and you can't move. Well, you can actually take damage from the grenades during that animation. It's bullshit. It's in the blooper section. You need to see it for yourself. And you'll notice right there, I did not use the back claw, I just used my batarangs and that was it because, again, Firefly is very quick to attack and a lot of times when he recovers from the back claw animation, he'll go into a cinematic moment, but if you avoid using the back claw altogether, you'll completely avoid those bullshit cinematic cutscenes. And you, uh, you have to use the back claw right here in order to script the sudden death phase, and during the sudden death phase, Firefly is just immune to glue grenades for no reason. And I really do not like this part of the fight because you see the amount of room I have to run around? Well, you are supposed to stay in the middle of this arena because eventually near the end of the sudden death phase, Firefly will throw all of his grenades to the sides. And if you are too far off to the sides and he throws those grenades, you have no chance of getting away. Why would they trick the player into thinking that you can go to those sides when it's just going to force you back into the middle of the arena? Look, look at that. Do you think I would have any chance of getting away if I was on those sides? Why would it give me the option to go to those sides if Firefly is just going to block off those areas? And there's even more pressure put upon me because the grenades that he throws have shitty hitboxes to them because they have a lingering hitbox after they detonate. It's meant to showcase that there's some lingering fire uh, after the detonation of the grenades, but you can't actually see the fire. And so the amount of times you'll take damage from nothing, it is trash. So trash. But at least I've done the sudden death phase and we have finished off Firefly. And now we get to transition to this part of the game where Bane had infiltrated the Batcave while Batman was busy fighting Firefly. And he has severely injured Alfred and we need to find him. And I remember my first time going through the sequence and I really ruined this entire moment.
when I was going through this the very first time I played Batman Arkham Origins because I was so confused because Batman was saying I need to restore detective vision and I was so unsure as to how to restore detective vision until I just went up to the bot computer and restored it and you know I'm not a big fan of the way they just add a bit of gameplay to this I, I, I would have much rather they just turn this into a, a cutscene moment because I feel like uh, there's a huge case of Ludonera the Dissonance in the beginning when you're having to decipher what to do. And when Batman is constantly yelling out to just restore Detective Vision, it almost makes it seem like he's far too dependent upon Detective Vision rather than actually uh, using his brains. And I mean, I understand that, uh, you know, Alfred was all the way down there. And how he survived that fall, I don't know. But, you know, it, it does come across as a bit of dependency on Batman, and it kind of makes him seem a little incapable. That's just my main problem with that. I feel like the scene would have been much better if it was all just a cutscene and not just some gameplay moment at the beginning. I mean, I understand this part where you have to use your shock gloves in order to uh, resuscitate Alfred. And even though this game released after Arkham City and Arkham Origins is a prequel to all of the Arkham games, and you know that Alfred is technically alive in those games, so um, I, can, I can understand people saying that there's no need for this scene because... We already know Alfred survives, but this is actually a very important part to uh, Batman's growth as a character. Because as I mentioned in the previous video, the culmination of events that take place in Arkham Origins contribute to Batman's overall growth. And why this game is my most cherished Arkham game when it comes to the character of Batman. Because, you know, the, the whole moment where uh, Batman is having flashbacks to the people that have died, like his parents, or like the bank teller, or with uh, Alfred right there. I mean, all of that just kind of came full circle right here, and like he's having to actually go through the same fear that he had when he lost his parents. I mean, this is something that they touched upon as well in the Batman 2021 film. And this vulnerable stage that Batman is in right now allows him to open up to his allies, to Alfred, and he really takes Alfred's words to heart. And he finally listens to Alfred when Alfred says he is not an island, but a man, and a man is only as strong as the allies he keeps around him. It's not just with brawn and intelligence, as he said, it's also from his allies. And this is what allows him to work with Gordon, and we, this relationship was already established at the end of Firefly's boss fight, when Batman is talking with Gordon, but it's established even more in this scene right here where Batman chooses to aid Gordon and he chooses to work with the police in order to stop the Joker from breaking out of Blackgate and this is a very important part to Batman's character and it's what allows him to achieve more of a growth from being a vigilante to more of a hero and I do like the scene for that but that's the end of that scene and now we have some bloopers so watch this see why did he cancel the free flow evade and go into the normal evade that's bullshit that is really dumb and then this next blooper right here, even though the propane tank is supposed to instantly take out these guys, it didn't take him out. Why didn't it take out this guy? I don't understand. And then this hallway right here, this hallway prevents me from actually using the remote control batarang. So look, it, it's, it didn't follow the batarang. It just stopped. I had no control over the batarang just then. It, it killed it right there. And I'm just waiting for these guys to turn up because I know one of the enemies is patrolling this way and I'm just trying to use my remote control Batarang in order to take him down. But the game will not let me. And look at it, I'm gonna try again. I get the auto-aim on him, but it will not let me control the Batarang and it just goes straight. And then here's some- look at that, I didn't even touch- like, I touched a bit of fire, but it wasn't even that much into the fire. And then right here, see that? Free flow evade into fire. Like, why do they favor these environmental hazards that don't complement the free flow combat? And then this right here, look at this. This is the forward momentum I got from the takedown. And I took damage, yet for some reason it didn't kill my combo, which is weird. And this is all just firefly bloopers from now on. But see right here, I throw my glue grenade. He, it cancels out before he even fires his flamethrower. It's bullshit. Why does it do that? And then this right here is a great example of what happens if you don't evade. See, he just catches you so easily with that cinematic flamethrower. And then this right here, uh, yeah, he just cancels out my glue grenade with the flamethrower, even though he didn't fire it, which is bullshit. And then right here, I somehow take damage from fire during this animation. How? How is that possible? And then here, Batman gets stuck. See, this animation's broken. They should have refined this animation better when walking on these beams. That is dumb. And then right here, I throw my glue grenade, it goes into this animation that's completely unnecessary, I know he's actually stunned by the glue grenade, but he's already thrown his grenades, I can't move, and I take damage during the animation. Same thing happened right here again. Why is that allowed? How did QA not find these kind of issues? And then right here, watch my glue grenade just detonate for no reason, it detonated in midair. Why? Why did it do that? And then right here, this is where the shit detection on this flamethrower happens. Look, it hits me before it even touches me. 
That's how much the active frame period is dishonest. And then right here, yet again, the same thing happened, where I take damage during an animation that I cannot cancel, I cannot move during. And then here, he hits me with phantom range. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. And then here, more phantom range nonsense. And then right here, we have lingering hitboxes on these grenades. Watch. I roll away. I roll back here because there's no fire. But look at that. I take damage from the fire that is not even there. I take damage from invisible fire from the grenades. And then here are some weird issues with the concussion detonator. I decided to just get creative with the concussion detonator. But it's still in the process of prepping. It hasn't even detonated yet. So this further cements the concussion detonator's place as being the most useless gadget ever in the entire Arkham series. There's him canceling on my grenade before he's even fired the flamethrower. And here's some lingering hitbox bullshit. Yeah, whoever designed the visual effects and the hitboxes should be fired. And here we have the sudden death phase. So look, this is me trying to move around the arena, but you have to pretty much count how many grenades he's using so that you know when he's going to unleash the full amount of his grenades. Because see, there is nothing I could do. So like, why would it let me go to this area if it's going to be that easy for him to just set the entire arena on fire? And with that, that concludes this entire video. Yeah, you can see why I don't like Firefly anymore if he's going to have these kind of problems. And if you adhere to this rigid strategy that I have for Firefly, you'll probably be able to enjoy this fight a lot better and actually appreciate the fight for what it is. But when you have to work within the confines of poor designs, that's really where a fine line is drawn. But that is the end of this video. Stay tuned for the final part of this walkthrough. Thank you all for watching, and you take care now.